Hey friends, so you're offshore fishing, you're starting that journey and you're saying to yourself, what is it about all these spreader bars? Do I need a spreader bar? I mean, they look kind of expensive. What's the purpose? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in today's video. All right, I'm excited about this one because we have the professor himself. And of course, now we've got our main man, the guy that you have now, you feel like he's become your best friend on the channel, Jimmy Hillsman, owner of Oceans East, North Carolina, Outer Banks here. And we are in his store. Love this place because for me and the professor, it's like kids in a candy shop. Everything we see, we want to. Yeah. It's like a buffet of Captain George's, which is great <laughs> here in Nagshead, by the way. And so, what is a spreader bar? What's the purpose? Go ahead, Jimmy. So, you know, offshore from basically Oregon Inlet on north, as far north as you want to go, these tunas are primarily eating squid. Okay. Um, so the spreader bars to imitate a school of squid on top, because that's what they're feeding on. So, or a ball of squid, however you want to say it. Okay. But that's what these bars are there to imitate. And so generally, how many uh, spreader bars do people run off of their spread? So in our area here, some boats are only fishing one out there a day, some two. And the farther north you go, you know, more and more and more spreader bars. And the guys up in the northeast, like up New York, New Jersey, uh -huh. a lot of them out there, they're pulling a whole spread of spreader bars. A whole spread of spreader bars. So it's pretty wild depending on the area that you're fishing. But definitely, I, I always want to have at least one or two in this area on north. If you get south of here, they're not feeding on squid as much. So you really don't need to pull one. Yeah. From Morgan, I'd say north, you definitely have to have at least one, if not multiple ones in your spread. And we use how many on Speechless, Professor? Well, it depends on what we're fishing for, how we're fishing, the water conditions, but we normally try to have at least one out. Yeah, and what's interesting is we've had success catching all types of species. I mean, we've caught, I mean, not oh, that yeah. we targeted them, but right. we've, we've caught a blue marlin on spreader bar. We've caught a blue before. marlin on yeah. spreader bar. So they can catch quite a, quite a few things, right. but it's mainly for tuna. Yeah. Mainly tuna for bait. tuna. Yep. Okay, now in terms of the the way they're designed, what should so, we what do we need to know about that? Yeah, there's so many different bars out there. I mean, for for the guy that buys a boat and all of a sudden wants to go fishing and he comes to a shop like this and you have 20 different options of different colors, different size squids, different type bars, a lot of different options. So the first one I want to show you guys today, a local guy makes this one. It's made out of juniper, a Charlie Midget. He makes these bars and sells them to us. And we actually rig them in here. He sells them plain. You can buy them plain like this, or we have our guys in here rigging them. The nice thing about this thing, Juniper is very light and it floats and you can slow the boat down. Say you're marking tunas, okay. troll across them, your regular six, seven knots, and they don't bite. Well, this thing, since it floats, circle back by and go over top of that school and you can start jigging the line and slow the boat down to a creepy crawl when a lot of the bars if you slow the boat down this thing's gonna sink underneath the water it's well, not gonna jig that. right this thing stays on top and it just sits there you can jig it and it looks like a, a ball of squid just kind of pulsating in the water that's cool y'all i mean cool. this is this is my old time favorite okay but what i will say is if you have a 50 reel you need to have something like a 70 or an 80 to pull it because it does have a lot of line drag all right but it's is my favorite all-time bar Okay, and once again, the name of that one is the? So Charlie Midget makes it, and it's the Charlie Midget Bird Bar okay. that we have here at Ocean's East. Charlie Midget, the Bird Bar. And this okay. is very specific to this area here. Yep. You, you're not gonna go many other places and see that, if any. You know his his I mean? grandfather made this, designed it, came up with this bar. He was a commercial fisherman, one of the best tuna commercial fishermen down here ever. And then he passed away, and the nice thing is Charlie now, is making the bar that his grandfather Keeping made. Keeping that legacy going. Awesome. So, all right, what else we got here to look at? So here's another bar that does not have what they call the bird on it. That's okay. what they call yep. that as a bird. And uh, it's just a, a squid bar, splash bar. You know what I mean? Like okay. he said, once you slow down, this would sink. Even though it has yep. floats in the squids, it's not gonna be as buoyant. Sure, as so you're that. not gonna be jigging this once you slow down. And, and... Yeah, that's so right. This bar is nice. Because the other bar, the bird bar, you can't pull that out of your rigger clip. It'll, right. it'll pop out. Yeah. It's too much line drag. These we call mini bars and we'll fish them out of our riggers. And actually they catch better fishing them out of your riggers because as the as the rigger moves, they kind of pulsate yeah. in the water like a ball of squid as they're moving. Ah. And, that, and you know, and you can tighten down oh, your yeah. clip. Okay, that's the, that's and, the most. And, and this thing, man, this thing. Yeah. 
caught a lot of tunes over the years on that. Um, you know, another thing that guys are gonna ask, well, what do you put behind these bars? In this area, there's three different things I'll rotate around to see what the fish want better that day. This is a white molecraft squid. You can use any colored molecraft. Here's a, a lure called a mancha, which is pretty neat. This is popular in the last couple of years. As a, we, we sell them rigged and unrigged, has a, a weight inside, and this thing darts all over the water behind the bar, become very popular. The mancha? The okay. mancha. All right. And then the old green machine that, you know, has been around for this many is a, years. This one you've mentioned many a time. I mean, dude, guys, green this machine. green machine is hard to beat. Yeah. And we have, you know, a 12 inch, a nine inch, depending on the size of the tunas that may be around. And when there's black fin tunas or small classy yellow fins, we use a little six inch green okay. machine. Now, they call it a green machine, but just because it's a green machine doesn't mean the color is it's green. green. Yep. This is a white green machine. <laughs> a white green That's machine. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Would you say the most popular trailer bait on a spreader bar is the green machine? I, I'd say so. The mancha is a newer thing. A lot of people, charter boats all buy them from me, but I'd say the average person hasn't even heard of a mancha. Um, but in the next few years, everybody's gonna be pulling one. You think so? A green machine pulls straight through the water and it catches the heck out of tunas. But this thing, just the with movement. the weight in the middle, okay. or the weight in the head, I'm sorry, that thing darts all around I me. Mean, the tunas go crazy trying to eat it. A lot of times they'll miss it a couple of times before they get it. So this mancha in the next couple of years is going to become very popular to the, the average person, um, tuna fishing. Now, another trailer bait that you can use is a sea witch with a ballyhoo or a Ron Z. Probably but the better option would be the Ron Z because it can get hit and you know not destroy the bait. But see, with this has so much drag on it, if you're really not paying attention, that sea witch can get short bit yep. and you can lose the tail off your, your rig ballyhoo or whatever. So that's why it's better to use a, a plastic, you know, an artificial bait behind that, and, that bar. And the nice thing is, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll have one hit your bar, pop it out, pull drag, and it'll come off. And what we immediately do is start jigging that line, jigging that line. And since it's not a, a ballyhoo that's bitten in half, the right. bait is still intact and everything's right. fine. And nine times out of 10, they come back and eat it again. If I start to jig it long enough, oh, wow. um, one will come back. And, and a it. lot of times they'll hit the wrong bait. You know, they right. might hit one of these, but yeah. you're jigging it. And these are always run furthest back in position. So they, yeah. they feel like it's, it's one How of the- How much further back? It all depends and it, all that's really personal preference, but I would yep. say anywhere from four to six feet behind your last bait. Yep. And the, the fish actually think that it's one of those squid right. that has gotten behind or a weaker one of it. And that's the one they normally try so, to get out. Yeah, so it's, I mean, everybody's gonna tell you something different on this bar fishing. Everybody likes something different. On the bird bar, I mean, you know, you said four to six foot, which I agree with you on the smaller bars. But bird bar, I started putting it back there. 10 or 12 foot even. Really? So which is crazy to even think something that far behind the actual bait. But some of us started trying that and uh, it even catches well, which really? is wild. Hmm. This, this, uh, this is another one here. It, what's, what's going on with this spreader bar? What's this deal? So that is what you call a side tracker. And it has the bird okay. and you can adjust this to make it move. Shoot off to the side. Shoot off to the side of the boat. So Almost some like of them are adjustable, yeah. some of them are not. But this bar, behind when you pull it behind the boat, it would make it pull away. That's Therefore, neat. widening your spread. Wow. It's, pre it's pretty neat. A lot of different companies have come out with with things like this. So it gets out there in that clean water. It does. We, which guys, with smaller boats, especially that maybe not, don't have as long of riggers or don't have riggers at all. It gets out there in that clean water. Which when is you important. say clean water, we're talking about the water yeah, that is outside that the wash. Drop wash, yeah. yeah. It gets yeah. it off to the side, which a lot of times just getting out there a little bit will get you that bite. Oh, that's neat. They sure uh, do look cool. They look cool, yeah. man. They look in your cool. experience, have you noticed, and I know this is very, you know, prevalent to water clarity, color, condition. Over your 16 years of being in the cockpit, have you noticed a color? that has stood out among the rest? Oh, that's the million dollar question, so, Professor. So I was a bar guy. When I was down there at the fishing center, I was one of the mates that had, so, had every different type bar in the world. Right. And I loved fishing a bar. A lot of guys around here do not fish as many bars as me. So I started over, over the years to figure out what bars work and what color water. Some places like up north, yeah, they have green water 90% of the time. In this area, I could go out there one day and it's pretty blue water 
The next day it's a nasty green. The next day it's a pretty blend. The next day it's a blue green blend. Our water changes so often here. Right. But with all that being said, so I had every color in the rainbow. But if I could say certain bars that catch good in yeah. certain colored water, I'd say I like the all red and blue water. Also in blue water, I like the blue, blue and white. Um, I have a pink and brown. This color works in any color water. This is a real versatile one. Um, and you start to get into like a blended water. I like pink. Pink is one of the all time best colors, any kind of variation of pink. Right. Um, I like this, it's like a pink brown, pink black. It's one of my all time favorite colors. Actually, this is probably my favorite bar of all my bars uh, for the water we have around here, a pink and brown or a pink and black. Um, you get into like a, a green, green water, like an ugly green. I like the all green bar. I like the all pink one. Um, so there's a couple of different, and then there's variations of each of the colors that you can buy. Um, but that's a good starting point to just have those so you can kind of tweak your bars depending on what the water color is that day. Professor, there's a, there's a lot to take in. Man, I'm liking it though. There's but I know you're liking it. You're taking notes too, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I mean, Big note pad. You constantly tell me about that local knowledge. Yeah. Local knowledge, Marcus. And that's what you find here when you come to Oceans East and anybody in the country can get one of these from you. All they just got to do is call and you can hook them up with, with a whole color set if they wanted. It, I mean, I, I have my guys, you know, George and Chris in here, or or me if I have time, we, we make the bars that we sell in the shop. So they're they're custom made from professionals that have done it their whole life for a living. So they're made right. I'm you know, there's some brands on the market that I see and see how they're made. And I know if they hook a big eye or something big on there, it's probably not gonna last. But, but our guys are very particular on what they do and how they do it and they'll make it right for whoever wants one. All right, Jimmy. Well, we certainly appreciate that knowledge and what you, what you brought to that Nags Head community. And hopefully you have enjoyed this. So make sure you, you can order anything you want from Oceans East, literally, to get yourself started. And uh, we hope this has been helpful for you. And uh, we hope that you come fish with this guy offshore this summer. It's going to be amazing. It's always going to be amazing when you're out there in that amazing water in the ocean. It's just nothing like it. It's just nothing like it. And so until the next time, everyone, stay salty.